works for me. That's a great card. That is a great card. Sure. I didn't necessarily want a forest, but... Does it matter? Not particularly. Take action. Boom. Take action. All right, they're super low. My fair citizens, Sodium City, we have Gargle on this. Now, of course, it's called Gargle on this because I guess that sounds like Golgari. I, I don't know. I don't know what you all think. You're the one that names the decks, not me, so I blame you. Anyway, this is a Golgari deck revolved around uh, land destruction, I guess you could say. It's primarily just casualties war for the land destruction. And a primal amulet allows us to double cast it. And we are using a loop of Baligad Recovery and Gaia's Blessing to help prevent us from milling out and also casting casualties war over and over and over and over and over again. Now when it transforms into a land, it becomes Primal Wellspring, where it's just tap, add one mana of any color, which is kind of cool. When that mana is spent to cast an instant or sorcery, copy that spell and you may choose new targets for the spell. And this is what really allows us to pretty much do anything that we want. So uh, mainly what we're gonna use this with is going to be Casualties of War late game. We just want to blow up all of their stuff. So Casualties of War, fantastic removal spell. Six mana, you get to choose one or more. Destroy an artifact, creature, enchantment, land, planeswalker. So any type of permanent that they have, you can destroy one of which is amazing. And then if you have a flipped Primal Amulet, you can do it twice, which is absolutely ridiculous. And then, kind of like what I said earlier, we are using Baligad Recovery, which is a three mana sorcery to return target card from your graveyard to your hand, which is, again, fantastic, because we're going to return Casualties of War to our hand nine times out of 10, unless we need to get a board wipe or something. And then the other thing that we're going to use a lot is going to be Gaia's Blessing, which is a two mana sorcery. Target player shuffles up to three cards from their graveyard into their library, and then you draw a card. However, when Gaia's Blessing is put into your graveyard from your library, shuffle your graveyard into your library, which this doesn't really happen unless we're going up against a mill deck. We don't have any self mill cards, so that part doesn't really affect us. But what we're going to do is we're going to target a Baligad Recovery, some other removal spells like Casualties of War, um, and shuffle all of our recursion and all the spells that we want to cast back into our library so that we can draw those cards. And again, with Baligad Recovery, we can get a Guy's Blessing back into our hand and shuffle even three more cards. So it really is impossible to mill us out unless they're running Ashiok. But outside of that, it's really, really fun. It's slow, painful, and torturous, but it can be very, very funny. And we are definitely running a few interesting cards here that I wouldn't normally run, uh, but because of the fact that we're using Primal Amulet and I want to utilize the um, spells costing one less as much as possible, I'm running cards like Death Sprout, uh, which is just destroy target creature, search your library for a base land card, put it on battlefield tapped. This is actually kind of good in a couple ways because we get to thin out our deck as well as it's a spell so it becomes cheaper plus it also gets to be able to flip our amulet once we need to um or we can cast it twice which is again also really nice but it only hits creatures and it's four mana so it's pretty expensive for what it does now the other card that we're using a four of is going to be plain wide celebration that's kind of weird so it's a seven mana sorcery choose four you may choose the same mode more than once and the different modes are create a 2-2 citizen creature token. That's all colors. So this is basically our win condition. And then the next one is return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand, which is really good if they kill one of our um, primal amulets or a cosmos elixir. Uh, those are essentially our only permanents. And then you have proliferate, which is really good because if you just cast your first primal amulet and then you have a plain wide celebration that you're going to cast next, you proliferate twice and then you choose two of any of the other modes and then it will get you to that three um, the three counters on the primal amulet and so then you only have to cast one more spell and it'll flip the amulet 
The thing you do have to worry about, though, the one you will really need to pay attention, because I know some of you are probably going to say, well, why don't you just proliferate three times? Now, Primal Amulet, it says, when you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a charge counter on it. Then, if there are four or more charge counters on it, you may remove those counters and transform it. So it doesn't say when there are four or more counters. It says then. So you have to cast an instant or sorcery and then do it. So when you first cast a spell, it'll add a counter and then you proliferate. Even if you proliferate up to a thousand, the instant already did that and it already went through. And so your proliferation doesn't do anything. So unfortunately it doesn't work that way, but it can still get prepped for any other spell that you get later on. So just keep that in mind if you want to proliferate your Primal Amulet with Plain Wide Celebration. Then of course the last mode is you gain 4 life, which this is just ridiculous. You can end up double casting this later on in the game against any type of aggro deck that's squeaking by. Because so obviously when you're running Casualties of War to blow up all their stuff, a lot of low to the ground aggro decks, they only need like 2 mana to cast the majority of their creatures. And later on in the game when you're looping Casualties of War, it's already like turned you know, 10, 11, 12, something like that, to where it's it's probably late game, it's very, very scary. So again, double casting to gain four life four different times, and you're getting 32 life for seven mana, which is still expensive, but that's a lot of life. But outside of that, it's really just a ton of removal with Maelstrom, Pulse, Ritual, Soot, Languish, Extinction Event, and then a little bit of ramp with Cultivate and Explore, and keep that in mind because Cultivate and Explore, you can double cast those with Primal Amulet. So if you double cast Cultivate, it is fantastic. You're getting four lands out of your library. It's very, very useful. But again, there's a ton of removal in this deck. So if you're not going up against a lot of like a lot of aggro decks and you're going up against more people with artifacts, enchantments, and planeswalkers, you may want to remove some of the board wipes like Extinction Event, Languish, Ritual Soot, maybe one of each put something else in there we do have four maelstrom pulses and three death sprout um so you could probably take out the death sprouts and add in binding the titans um or sorry barney binding the old gods and then i would also highly recommend putting in underrealm lich i think adding four underrealm liches will make this deck much better because right now it's sitting at about a 50 percent win rate and so i won't say that this deck is the truth but i think that with underrealm lich this deck could be very very powerful so again, keep that in mind, but if you decide to take this deck and play it at home, it will set you back about 60 rares, but no mythics. So it's not that bad. Again, it is an 80 hard deck. Keep that in mind as well. So take it, give it a shot. I'm not gonna say it's the truth. I'm not gonna say it's complete garbage. I'm not gonna dare you to play it, but don't use the wild cards until Strixhaven because there's gonna be a lot of new decks coming. You don't want to miss any of them. If you want to see more slow, painful Golgari control decks, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like button, bell notification. We come out with videos seven days a week. Don't want to miss any of them. And if you want to support the channel even more than that, then go ahead and hit that join button. You get a whole lot of different perks with that, including me playing your decks in some of these videos. So go ahead and check that out. Or you can go over to Twitch and become a tier two or tier three subscriber to get the same perks there. And as for yesterday's comment question of the day, I asked you, do you think they should bring back legendary sorceries? Here are your answers. If you want your comment featured on these videos, make sure you answer the comment question of the day every single day, seven days a week in the comment section below. Stay salty and enjoy the games. Might need to throw in a bunch more card draw. I do think I need to take out some lands, but it still seemed like we were getting mana screwed, even with 39 lands. That's... That's not normal. Yeah, we should definitely not be missing land drops at 39 lands. But I think we could probably take out... four lands and add in some card draw. That can throw in some... I almost just want to put in either a Mortal Sun or put in the Elixirs. I still like the Elixirs. Can't cast Assassin's Trophy. Assassin's Trophy is still like a... an iffy, I don't really know if I want it in the deck type of card. 
It's nice because it removes anything, but it's not the greatest because it ramps them. Especially since there's a lot of monocolor decks out there or two color decks. It's the three and four color decks that we're usually fine with going up against. Assassin's Trophy. That's not good. Yeah, I would have really liked to Assassin's Trophy to kill that mountain. Hell no. Hell no. Like, I will gladly give you a land for that Sarkhan's Unsealing. There's absolutely no way I'm letting you untap with that. Bala. Get the cultivate. Do this. Get a black and green. And that'll be fine. Yeah, we're basically just thinning out our deck as much as possible. We'll smack that again. Yeah, we are ramping them, but we're pretty much the same spot they are. Except that is going to be... Okay. Uh, I can double up one of my Crawling Barons and block something. See. That's indestructible. Ouch. Take two damage. I think that's the only thing I can do. Finally got a primal amulet, which is pretty nice. We're at six life. It's gonna be hard to come out. Oh, I should put plain wide celebration in this deck. That's a great idea. Well, that sucks. All right, going down to one. <laughs> oh, 
Going down to one. <sighs> Please don't have another creature. Fuck you. Nope. That was a land. Yeah, okay. Uh, plain wide celebration is not a bad idea because all the life gain. Okay, so there's two possibilities right now. I can either... I definitely need to take out some lands. I think I can take out two, three, four and add in. It's either adding in four plane wide celebrations, which is obviously pretty good because it's a win condition, it's life gain, it's expensive though. It's either that or Cosmos Elixir. I think it's Plain Wide Celebration. I think it's Plain Wide Celebration. I really do. Yeah, let's see. Let's test it out. I mean, the deck, the deck felt better that time. It was just, it was just a loss is all. It was just the fact that it was a loss. I think I need to take out Assassin's Trophy. As much as I don't want to say it. Is Desperate only opponent? Destroy target creature. No. I have creatures from Plain White Celebration. Still thinking maybe I should have played Balagad, but I'm unsure. Unsure. Okay, so it's a gate deck right now. That's bad. Yeah, I think I maybe should have just waited. So we get to Primal Amulet. No? Alright. The old sleepy butt plug. Alright, they're just like a spells deck. It's just is it spells? I don't like that I'm missing land drops. Another one? Do in fact have another one. <sighs> I don't know. The weight is killing me. If I can beat this. I need another land. I need a land off the top. Uh, hopefully they can't kill all these, right? <laughs> Time to choose. What is good for you?
The reason I attacked is because I was baiting out some type of like damage spell. Like if they were gonna kill one of my one of my citizens. That's bad. Every problem has <laughs> time it's to five. Do. One, two. I can get it up to four, but that's it. Beautiful. Good tap out. Good tap out. Go, go, Maelstrom Pulse. Beautiful. Beautiful Maelstrom Pulse. Uh, I don't think they play any creatures. Like, I don't quite know what they're... Killing us with. Side of Ral, I guess. Okay, so they wanted the card, whatever was in their hand. It is in fact a Ral. Top two cards, put in the graveyard. Oh, come on. I just want to yeah. The weight is killing me. Two, three. Alright, one, two, three. And boom. Perfect. Perfect. And before they can draw, because maybe they draw a counter spell to protect that. I definitely don't want them to protect that. Okay. Two dragons down, two rows or three? Which is that? Three? Mm -hmm. So we have one at three, one at four. Kill that thing. Retreat is a valid uh, now I might actually pump up my barons. Might just blow up that Jace. Sure. All right, they're going for a mill. Which seems odd. Decline, decline. Okay, they have a spell. Definitely don't want me thinning out my deck. Take action. I'm actually just gonna win with Crawling Barons. Can pump this up to five. 
definitely do. Good draw. Good draw. Please don't draw a counter spell off that. Okay. Jesus. Jesus is love. Oosh. All right. I win next turn unless they get out a blocker. All right. All right. They got out a blocker. Now, once again, dead next turn, unless they get a blocker. Never didn't have it. All right. So, I believe... Need... Cosmos Elixir. Try that. If you want to see me build and play all these decks live, then go ahead and make sure to follow me over at twitch.tv slash striderstone. I stream five days a week every day except Monday and Thursday. Schedules in the description below. There's no way this could end poorly. Nothing can possibly go wrong. I really don't also want to have to put in binding the old gods. I'm thinking I might legitimately just have to put in two Masterminds Acquisition. I don't want to, but I might need to. Gross. I don't have a black source yet, which is very, very bad. Ah, I forgot to put in a thing. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm definitely going to Primal Amulet next turn again. Hopefully I get an untapped land. It would be great. Okay. I'm gonna actually have to do this. Maybe we'll get something out of this. I don't even know what we can get out of this. Uh, that's not gonna do it. I guess drawing any board wipe would have been nice there. Yeah, I would have liked to be able to double cast a Maelstrom Pulse, because right now I only have two... Holy fuck. Alright, I did not expect that. Okay. 
Okay. Well. This. So then if I do one, two, three, four, let's do that. And then bring back pulse. So now I can, if I'm not dead, cause I go down to one as of right now. Unless they have another one of these things. But they would have had a top deck or else they would have probably used it last turn, right? Okay. It's good that they're not attacking first and then doing that. Because I would have actually died this turn. Had they done that. So, the question is... Yeah, let's just do this. Let's just fix all of it. I hate that I can't even cast Death Sprout still. Um Probably just blow my blast zone at the end of their turn. Kills that speaker, because that's one, right? That is one as well. Beautiful. It's two. Okay, that's fine. Um, I can hopefully deaths, double death sprout, hopefully. black sources. So I'm hurting for the black sources. Alright. I mean... Yes. And then this is ridiculous. I'm gaining a little bit of life. I have more life than you, opponent. I do, in fact, have more life than you. Weird flex, but okay. The Cosmos Elixir would be beautiful right now. We're both on top deck mode. However, I have a lot of mana. Really? You attack into that? You can make it into... Alright. 
works for me. That's a great card. That is a great card. Sure. Hey, I didn't necessarily want a forest, but... Does it matter? Not particularly. Take action. Boom. Take action. Alright, they're super low. We're drawing two cards a turn. They're dead next turn unless they get a blocker, but we have a double Maelstrom Pulse. We're gonna pretend like we didn't have it. Heh <laughs> Had it all along, sucker. Yeah. Feels good still. Feels good. Yeah, like I said, once we fixed it the first time around, it felt good, even though we lost a couple times. Let's see, after we made the changes, the first changes, we lost, we won, and then we lost. Then I made another change, and then we won. So, we're like 50-50 after we made the, the main change. And now, I think with Cosmos Elixir, it's going to be even better. I really do think that's going to be a massive improvement. Like, massive, massive, massive. I forgot to put in Bajuga Bogs. I was even in the deck building list thingamabob. No, Thoughtseize. Damn it. Uh, they could get rid of Cultivate. They could get rid of Bala. That I did not expect. Yeah, Casualties of War was not what I expected. I thought they were going to slow it down instead of... Um... I really want to play that Cosmos Elixir. That would be great. Please don't have a targeted... Please don't have targeted discard. What is this? Okay. I'm just gonna... On the pressures. Uh, we go and do this. Get boom boom. That was a good turn. It's a good turn. Now I probably all I get my casualties back. So they're missing land drops a lot. Yeah. Uh, it's like, I think I'm one off. Mm. Definitely gotta get rid of that castle. Can't let them draw cards either. Great primal amulet. Okay, no targeted discard. I don't know what that does. But it's dead. Odd. <laughs> like, I don't know what it is, but it's dead. 
Another Primal? Great. I'll take it. I will take it. They may surrender soon. It's definitely possible. That's a good, that's a good card. We take Balas. We do take Balas. Three, four, one, two, three. Yeesh. Um, casualties of war, yeah. I thought about getting extinction event just so I could exile, but I think getting land drops is probably more expensive, or er, more expensive, more beneficial, because I do have a crawling barons that I can actually block that with now because it's a four four. Like, if they attack, we know they have removal. That's fantastic. Ritual suit. We about to suit up. It's a good card. Decline. Decline. That's also a fantastic card. Yeah, and then being able to double cast plane wide celebration, like they were there there was no way you were coming back from that. There was literally no way. There was nothing you could do at that point. Just gaining a ton of life and then having two cosmos elixirs, I was gonna draw three cards a turn. There's Nothing. There's literally nothing you can do about that. I'm starting to like it more and more. It definitely started out not good. It didn't feel good. And now it actually kind of feels good. To the point where I'm close to taking it into ranked. Close. We'll see. I might, I might do it on stream tomorrow. We'll see. Going first with two board wipes, a Bala, Cultivate, we can cast everything. It's definitely not bad. It would just really suck if they thought seized us and got rid of like a Bala. Okay. So Languish is really good against this matchup, and so is Extinction Event. Ritual Soot? Not so much. Oh, okay. Never mind. Different than what I thought it was going to be. So we just get double black here. Opponent, come on. Um nice holding up zero mana. Cool. Uh just have to hope that they can't get that up to like a f more than five toughness. Or up to five toughness. Okay. Do you have two spells? Do you have two spells to keep it alive? That would be so devastating. No, okay. Woo! That's good, that's good. It's good. Um, I can cultivate and Bali get back the languish. I can ritual soot.
definitely gonna soot. Yeah. And Extinction Event is fantastic here as well. So it can't do anything about it. Protection does nothing. That is a problem. The only way I have to kill that is Casualties of War. Because that is not a creature on my turn. What do you know? Casualties of War. Most of their protection spells are creatures? Or only for creatures? Not Planeswalkers? Yeah, I can... I'll probably just ball it, get back that casualties, to be honest. Do I? Hmm... That's very unfortunate. I don't want to do that, but I couldn't let them get a bunch of tokens. I suppose I could have. Maybe I needed to. Do I even bother killing that? Don't think so. Not yet, anyway. I mean, I will, obviously, when throw down casualties. They don't have any black. Okay, they did get their fourth land again. Another Dread Horror. Kind of, so I'll just Extinction them for even. Oof. Alright, this actually really hurts. So we're going to give it another plus two. And another plus one. Five, six, seven, eight. Take five. That actually really hurts. Yeah. Or no, we go down to six. I mean, it still hurts, obviously, but... Go away. Uh, I definitely don't want a castle. Hasties are going to be the death of me. I need to get a Crawling Barons to stop that. Death Sprout will stop that. Um, Cosmos Elixir will help get me out of this. Plainwide Celebration is also good. I should be going for the white sources. Alright, I did throw back my casualties of war. Even. And they'll never think that we have another one in our hand. I'm pretty sure. I still worry about drawing a card here, but I think I do. Extinction event. And then let me bala bala bala. Ok. 
Okay, so we have two extinction events once again. It's a great card. Absolutely. Sure. And like, I don't want anything to do with that, because that can protect anything. I need to get some life gain. So I have four plain wide celebrations and four cosmos elixirs. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now give me a plain wide celebration or another cosmos elixir. Perfect. Beautiful. That's what I like to see. Head explosion, easy game, clap. Every time. Alright. Fog. Boom boom. Okay, let's try that. Fogs are great. I just have to, like, put them in the deck. And when I say, oh, we need to put Bajugabog in there, we need to make sure Bajugabog is actually in there. I feel like it just went super foggy. Change the brightness on this thing? I'm sure I can. Figure it out. I know there's a way. I have a thing. There's a thing. Doing it live. Do it live! I can I'll write it and we'll do it live! I think I have it on my actual PC. Alright, so I probably Cosmos Elixir next turn? I think I do. Just cause I don't know what... Okay. Definitely do that. So they're gonna do two damage a turn, and we're gonna gain two life a turn, which means fuck them. Right? Let's get up to six life. I still like thinning the deck out more. It's like mono blue Murpho. It seems so odd. Well, that's unfortunate because now I don't get to draw a card next turn. They may not be happy about that. Alright. And now, the next creature they play, I Death Sprouted. Right, their face is dead. At the end of the day, this deck ended up going 4 and 5 in ranked. I believe it went 6 and 6 in play mode. Uh, so it's definitely not a fantastic deck, as you can see. On the play, we can actually win games. On the draw, not so much. And that's kind of one of the biggest problems that you have with Primal Amulet decks in general is just because you want to almost avoid playing any of your spells until you have Primal Amulet down. And obviously when you're running into a uh, 80 card Yorian deck or a Norian deck, which this is, uh, it's hard to find your Primal Amulets. And then a lot of times by the time you get your amulet, you don't have any more spells. So it then becomes a matter of refilling your hand. 
Um, we are able to mill out anybody with the constant looping of Guy's Blessing and Ball to get recovery. However, you have to get to the point where you have completely thinned out your deck and done everything that you've needed to do up until that point, which this deck does not quite do quickly enough or efficiently enough. So that's the current problem that we have with this deck. And honestly, I think the best thing that we could use in this deck is going to be something along the lines of Underrealm Lich. And I know Gaia's Blessing does end up cycling through the cards so frequently, but Underrealm Lich allows you to look at the top three cards of your library every single turn and get exactly what you want. And I believe that is just so unbelievably powerful. And when you cast it, you're going to be able to get through your Gaia's Blessings so quickly because there's four in this deck. And it is an 80 card deck, which makes it obviously a little bit more difficult to find them. But when you're going through three cards every single turn, not including if you cast an explore or you cast a guy's blessing or whatever you end up needing to cast, but being able to always get your cards from your graveyard to your library, I believe is just absolutely ridiculous. So I think that may be the biggest change. I really, that has to be one of the biggest mistakes in this deck is not having that card um, and it sounds maybe a bit dramatic but i really do think that is a huge improvement that would be a huge improvement to the deck thank you all so much for watching if you made it to this point it means you either really enjoyed the video or you fell asleep and i'm waking you up now <laughs> either way thank you for all the support i really do appreciate it if you want to see more videos like this hit that subscribe button hit the bell notification come out of the video seven days a week